Welcome to channel 16. In this session, we will discuss a simple process for assessing the root cause of any accident. This process is called as Ishigawa or fishbone process. I am your trainer for this session. Now when an accident occurs, an investigation is initiated. The investigation team collects evidence in the form of records, pictures, statements, etc. The investigation team then conducts an analysis to assess the causes that led to the accident, particularly the root cause that led to the accident. In this session, we will discuss the Ishigawa or fishbone process of investigation. Once the root cause has been identified, then comes the next step of improvement, which is carrying out necessary changes as actions to prevent recurrence of the same incident. So analysis of the root cause is the key issue that we're going to discuss. The topics we will discuss is what is the difference between root cause and immediate cause? What is the Ishigawa process for root cause analysis? And what is an indicator for root cause? More often, we term the immediate cause as the root cause, and thus the action to prevent recurrence of the same incident addresses only the immediate cause, while the underlying root cause, the root problem, remains uncovered. The immediate cause is the symptom, such as fire in the galley, caused due to smoking. The fire is put off by the use of fire extinguisher. It may be followed up by training personnel or warning ship staff not to smoke in the galley. Often, human error is concluded as the root cause. In fact, human error is the start point for assessing root cause and not the end of a root cause analysis process. Human error addresses the immediate cause or direct cause while such action will address only that ship and that too only for the seafarers on board the vessel at that time. The possibility of such an accident to repeat on the same vessel on a later date or on the same vessel on, on other vessels in the fleet exists. Why? since only the symptom that is human error has been addressed and not the root cause. For assessing the root cause, we need to dive, dive further down. Ishigawa is a well acclaimed and proven process to assess root cause, provided it is conducted by a team of at least two or more persons in a brainstorming session. The more the people, the better to get different viewpoints. The root cause could lie in the man, it could lie on the material, the management system, the machines, the methods, that's the procedures and the checklist, the, the work environment. Now for doing a case study to see how this Ishigawa process works, we will consider a scenario. The scenario is that on a vessel, the ship staff enters an enclosed space without following the permit to work and or conducting a risk assessment. So they're not supposed to do that, but they did that. So what is the root cause? Why is it that such an incident occurred? For doing the Ishigawa, we place the problem on the extreme right. So the problem is entering entered enclosed space without the permit. Then we draw an arrow towards the problem. Then we identify the area heads where the root cause may lie, such as man, method, machinery, others. So that depends upon the nature of the incident. So it is not necessary that man, machinery, method, are to be used but it depends on the nature of the incident right in this process uh, we will now go further we'll dive deep into 
each of these. So let's go into the man. So why did the man not follow? Permit to work procedure not followed. And why so? Enclosed space drills and training not well conducted on both the vessel. Monitoring of the drills by office was not adequate and thus drills were not being properly conducted. Now why exactly monitoring of drills by the office seems to be not adequate? We'll check on that. Senior officers not adequately monitoring permit to work and that led to ship staff not following the permit to work procedures. Complacency led to senior officers not adequately monitoring. We'll see what exactly led complacency. Crew did not follow permit to work procedure. That's the method we're talking about the procedures. And why so? Crew was not aware that void space is an enclosed space. Now, monitoring of permit to work process by office is not adequate and that led to this. Now, if you look at monitoring of drills by office not adequate, what is it that led to this? It is possible that this process of monitoring the enclosed space drills is not being adequately addressed in the internal audit or superintendent visits on both the vessel. Inadequately trained in consequences of non-compliance. So complacency, why did this complacency come up? It is possible that the personnel on board are not adequately trained in what are the consequences of non-compliance with permit to work procedures. What led to this? It's not included in the internal audit or superintendent inspections. So this monitoring has not been included there. And what perhaps led to this? Procedures do not specify that void spaces is an enclosed space. Now, there could be other areas instead of others. It could be communication, it could be work environment, it could be training, or it could be anything else based on the nature of incident. Now, if you look into these, we see the yellow colored ones are the immediate causes. The black can be considered as contributory causes to the incident. But the red colors, which are right at the bottom, right at the end, they can be considered as the root cause. In this process, it is important to have two or more in fact, more the merrier to contribute in this process. It is recommended that each person identifies and contributes. If, however, there is nothing from a participant, then he or sh she should say a pass and continue to the next person. This process should continue till the root causes are identified. Now, how do you know that you've actually reached the root cause? You actually reached here and you're not surfing on the surface and looking at what is the symptoms. So while conducting an investigation, how would an investigator conclude that the cause identified is the root cause? Now that's a very big question mark. Root causes lie well below and has to be uncovered by the investigation team. So when conducting a root cause analysis, uh, when you reach a point that reflects on the weakness in the system, the system is uh, primarily the management system, the procedures, the checklist, then it can be presumed that you have reached the root cause of the problem. This is the most important part. Often companies send fleet alerts, emails. Now these can be considered as patches. What is most important and essential are the changes in the relevant procedure or checklist that need to be carried out. This is often not done by the ship staff and thus we see the same incident being repeated. In the case study that we have just done of entering enclosed space without permit, necessary changes will need to be carried out in the permit to work procedure and checklist so that it does not repeat in any other vessel in the fleet. Hope the presentation was useful in clearing the doubts on root cause analysis using the Ishigawa process. Thank you.